In the second part of lesson 1.6, we are going to go ahead and go from our parent functions and expand upon them talking using our transformations. In lesson 1.2, you learned about our, how different transformations are reflected in the equations of those graphs. Let's just do a quick review of that right here. First off, remember that our C value here is standing for a constant. But in this case, what we're going to see here is that if we are going to move the graph up or down, in this case using our vertical translation, this means that we will add or subtract a constant, or in this case a number, outside of the function. So in this example where we have f of x plus 2, this will shift the graph up 2. Similarly, if we want to shift the graph left or right, in this case horizontally, this means we will add or subtract a number inside the parentheses or inside the function just working with the x values. So like in this example, we'll be shifting the graph right 3 because it is a minus 3 on the inside. A plus 3 would have moved the graph left. The other type of transformations you learned about were reflections. We talked about reflections over the x-axis and the y-axis. When we have a negative outside of our function, this right here is going to be a reflection over the x-axis. You can also think of this as a flip. Similarly, if the negative is found inside the parentheses or inside the function, this will be a flip over the y-axis. And so, the position of that negative will make all the difference when we're talking about reflections. Next, outside of our translations and our reflections, we also learned about dilations. Remember, dilations is just another word for stretching or compressing. And we get to talk about vertical stretches and, and vertical shrinks, and horizontal stretches and horizontal shrinks. A vertical stretch is going to stretch the graph towards the y-axis. You can think of this as making the graph actually thinner. To do this, you're going to multiply each y-coordinate by c. And this will make the graph vertical and make this thinner. In this case, if we think about our example, we would be multiplying every output by 3, making it grow faster. If we have a vertical shrink, in this case, it will be shrinking away from the y axis. This will be another way of saying that the graph is going to be made wider. And we can get this by multiplying every output by the fraction, in this case, where it's less than 1. So like in this case, we're talking about where it's one third. For a horizontal stretch, it's very similar to our vertical shrinks and stretches, but it's going to be a little bit different since we're affecting the inputs or the x values instead of the outputs. For a horizontal stretch, this is going to make our graph wider as well, similarly to a vertical shrink. But in this case, instead of multiplying each y coordinate, we are going to be dividing each x coordinate by the constant that we have. So like in this case, we would be multiplying by each x input by 2, since it would be the reciprocal of 1 half. A horizontal shrink is very similar to a vertical stretch. This is going to make the graph thinner, since it's going to be shrinking away from the x axis. For example, in this case, we're dividing each x coordinate by 4, and so this will be like multiplying by our 1 fourth, making it shrink away from the x-axis. What we want to talk about next is how to put these all together. So in our first example here, let's look at our original function. Notice this is a function because it does pass our vertical line test. So I'm just going to highlight some points on it and write their coordinates out. In this case, we have the four points, negative 4, negative 2, 0, 2, 2, 2, and 4, 0. We're going to use these points to help us draw our new graph based on the transformation. So if we look at the next equation here, we have g of x equal to 2 times f of x. That 2 is on the outside, so that's our a value, which means this is going to result in a vertical stretch of the graph. So what we need to do here is make sure that we multiply all our outputs or our y values of our points by 2, giving us these new points of negative 4, negative 4, 0, 4, 2, 4, and 4, 0. And if we plot 
will give us the new transform graph. We can see here that if we compare the two here, everything has been stretched vertically by two. In our next example, notice we have a negative on the inside. So this is gonna be a reflection or a flip over the Y axis. This means with our points that we will be changing the sign of the X values. So that right there will reflect it over the X, or sorry, the Y axis. So instead of having negative four, negative two, well that negative four is now gonna be on the positive side, giving us positive four, negative two. Similarly, giving us zero two, negative two two, and negative four zero. And if we compare the two graphs here, if I not drawn exactly to scale, but close enough, that we can see that it is reflected over the y axis, just flipping the signs of those x values. I'm going to go ahead and draw in the original graph that we had here and go ahead and write those points, referring to that as f of x. In this one here, since we have a negative one inside the function, this is going to shift everything right once as a subtraction. This would be the same thing as adding one to all our x values. So going from our negative four to a negative three, and from our zero to one, our two to three, and four to five, it's just shifting that graph over one unit. So if we compare the original black graph to this teal graph, we can see that it's just being shifted right one. Notice nothing changed in the y values since the translation is only affecting the x coordinate. In our next example here, we have a two on the inside. This right here is a result in a horizontal compression. This means that our graph is going to get a little more thinner, or it's gonna be like squashed towards the y-axis. So in this case, this is only going to affect our x values since it is inside the parentheses. Remember, to do a horizontal compression, we always wanna multiply by the reciprocal. So this is going to have everything, have all our x values. So instead of negative four, we have negative two. Instead of zero, well, in this case, zero stays the same. Instead of two, we're multiplying by a half to make it one. And again, with the positive four, if we take positive four times a one half, we get two giving us these points here. And so if we compare, again, the black graph to our green graph, we can see how it is being compressed towards the y-axis, making it look a little bit skinnier. Our last example here has the negative four on the outside. This is gonna shift all our y values down four, since it is outside of the function. So our x values are gonna stay the same, of negative four, zero, two, and four, but shifting all those y values down too. And so if we go ahead and plot these new points, we will see that our graph, if we compare the black to the purple, has stayed in the exact, the x values have stayed the exact same, but the y values have just been de shifted down four. We need to make sure that we're able to apply these transformations to the right coordinates or just using our knowledge based on the graph to make sure that we can graph these equations appropriately. The cool thing about transformations is though that they will work for any of our parent functions based on whatever information is given. So it doesn't matter if it's a quadratic, an absolute value, or a square root. If I have a subtract four on the outside of the function, it's still gonna shift it down four no matter the shape.